Can I talk to you initially, if you don't mind, at the beginning and talk to me about uh, Nicola and why she is your captain and, you know, what went into the whole decision making process there? Yeah, look, I think what you want from your leader is somebody, firstly, who's smart, who understands uh, the path that you're travelling as a group. Uh, but most importantly, I think if you look at uh, Nicola's DNA, um, she represents the entirety of the group. She's She's got great grit. Uh, she's, got charis- she's got good charisma. Um, she's got great heart. Um, so she really is at the forefront of what we're trying to build here. And, and she was the obvious choice. And, and I think... The reaction yesterday by the entire squad just shows you um, why she was the right choice and why we're delighted to have her with us. It's a big job, isn't it, Greg? Uh, she's now the leader of, uh, of of your team going forward. I mean, it's a, it's a new start for everybody. Yeah, look, it is a big job, but to be honest with you, it, it's important that she has good lieutenants around her. So we've got a really good senior leadership group. We've got Hannah O'Connor, who is a terrific leader as well. We've got Catherine Dane, who's part of the senior leadership group, and, and Nicole Cronin who are there to support uh, Nicola Friday in her quest. And also behind her, then you have a, you've, you have a player group that are, are, are all feeding into that one thought process. So I think that uh, my job as, as a coach is only as strong as my management team. I think for, for Nicola Friday, her job is only as strong as the people around her. So uh, we're blessed that we've got a really terrific group that are working hard for each other. And that's the DNA of us as, 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 a, as an entirety. Okay, Greg, I'll leave it with you uh, for now. Thanks so much for that. Nicola, can I turn to you? When when you were asked to become the captain, I mean, what was your reaction? How did you, kind of, how did it sit with you? Were you surprised, excited, delighted, all of those rolled into one? Yeah, I think you kind of nailed it there. It was a, 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 most, a mixture of everything, nearly. Um, I find out alongside Greg included my parents in it, so that, that was really special to me. Um, they've been behind me the whole way since I've come into the setup so it was really nice to have that kind of aspect to it as well and it meant a lot to me and my family to just for this it's just a huge honour and and like it's kind of I suppose what people dream of like getting to represent your country is amazing but then to captain your country like that's such a huge honour and I, I'm I'm very grateful and I'm very excited to see kind of where this group can go now over the next few weeks As Greg said there I mean it's um, it's a job um, that is going to be well, like it's kind of shared, you know, sort of not a, not even a burden, but it's a responsibility that's that's shared amongst other people as well. Yeah, look, we have I, I, that leadership group that Greg has mentioned is they're very they're individually very strong leaders, and then like their game knowledge as well is very is very strong as well. So to have them supporting me is is a huge asset. But then. There's still other leaders amongst the group that have been in the squad for the last four or five years that are really strong leaders and strong players. So for me, I'll be trying to pull upon as many people as I can because you're only as strong as the people around you. Hey guys, uh, congratulations, Greg. Congratulations, Nick, Nicola. Um, Nicola, um, can you just tell me about your first steps in rugby or your first memories or who was your first coach or your biggest influence as a coach when you when you were starting your rugby days? Um, I suppose my, I owe it a lot to my, my home club of Tullamore. Um, I started there with them in in my second year of college and I always say that it was it was the girls there and the, and the coaches there that kind of they installed the love of rugby. Like if I'd gone into that session and I hadn't, they hadn't been as welcoming or I hadn't enjoyed it as much, maybe I wouldn't have gone back to it. You know that kind of way. So I find that that's that's the draw to rugby and that's what your local clubs bring is is that is that love for the game. And like I'm still like they're still some of my closest friends, even though I've moved on to different club. They they still are my number one supporters and they're the ones that I always kind of go back to when I'm at home. So they've definitely installed the the love of rugby into me. Very good. Greg, um, just a quick one. Who's the vice captain for the team? Well, we have a, a leadership group. Uh, uh, our leadership group is uh, Nicola Friday, who's our captain. We have Hannah O'Connor, Catherine Dane, and Nick, uh, Nicole Cronin. Okay, so you're one of those. Um, what would you have seen over the last few months when you've been preparing for this job? What is your biggest task in terms of moving this team onto the next level? I, 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 it's a great question. I think first and foremost, it, it's our job to create a really positive learning environment. Uh, so we need to put our processes in place, uh, surrounding our thoughts into the game, and you know how we use GPS, 
how we engage our staff surrounding our nutrition, our S&C. Like you, you need to make sure that your S&C program mirrors what you're trying to get out of from a rugby point of view. So there's definitely a, a particular way that we want to play that we've bought into and it's important then that your program aligns with that throughout the whole of uh, the management team and honestly you're only as good as the people around you and um, I'm just probably the most impressive thing in all of this are the staff that we have, uh, they're people who I've worked with previously, they're people who are very capable, uh, the people who know how I work because I'm, I'm a little bit different um, I think people sometimes don't know what's going on in my head and that's fine. Uh, but most importantly, they're all there for the players and they're all there to make sure that uh, each day we're getting better and we'll put all our energy into our process. So Wales is just another exa another chance for us to learn uh, and to, to improve in our process and, and the wins will come separate to that. We've got to just make sure that we're sticking to what we're trying to build and at the heart of that is making sure that we have a vibrancy and an energy that is infectious and it can inspire uh, not only female players to play but people like my dad at home to turn on the TV and, and look forward to watching us play a game um, so I, I think that's at the heartbeat of what we're doing Just, I, I think there's a sevens clash later on in the tournament mm. have you been given assurances that you will have a full deck to yeah. pick from when that comes about and there'll be no restrictions for you on that on, from that point of view yeah um, yeah I was given those assurances but I'm being true to myself and this is a World Cup 7s year um, and look the 7s players are incredibly professional they're, they've been coached brilliantly and they're going to be important to us but we need to build depth as well within the squad so for me we've talked as a group about this uh, we allowed the players to um, have a say in, 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 in how selection is carried out we're all very comfortable with that um, that we have the sevens team. I think it's important that, that as many as possible go to Langford and represent uh, the women for the World Series because it's a World Cup year for the sevens. Because I'm telling you now that we're going to have a World Cup year for 15s and we need to play, play ball with them. We need to work together. And, you know, Aidan McNulty, who's the, the sevens coach, uh, you know, we see the game very similarly um, and we're very much aligned. The players are very clear. And it's a good chance for us for the last few games and Italy and France to look at as many players as we can as we build our squad. Um, and as I keep saying, we've got to keep learning, keep getting better. And um, the more people that we can see during the Six Nations, the better. So I'm really happy that uh, we have the sevens players, as you call them, um, for the pre-season that we've had, our pre-camps, and, and for, for the number of games that we have. But once they cross... Once they cross the line coming in here, they're 15s players and, and they're excited about being part of this group and uh, we're excited to have them.